Dear loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for giving us the privilege of life. Thank you also for providing for us the basic necessities to sustain our life. And we also thank you for the spiritual blessings that you give to us through your word, through the Holy Spirit, through the ministry of the holy angels and of our Lord Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. Dear Father in heaven, we are on this earth to perfect our characters to be in the similitude of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there are lots of defects of character that we have. We ask that as we fellowship with you now, that by your grace we shall have power to become the sons and daughters of God as is promised in your word. We pray, Father, that your word shall be spirit and life to us. Grant us of your spirit. Dear Father, please consecrate me to your service, for I have thing, nothing to say to bless your children, but I pray that you will put your words in my mouth for the sake of our Lord and Savior that died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. May we all be blessed by the words we will hear now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Conflict and Courage December 3 Profitable Born Fire And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. Acts chapter 19 verse 18 and 19 by burning their books on magic. The Ephesian converts showed that the things in which they had once delighted, they now abhorred. It was by and through magic that they had especially offended God and imperiled their souls. And it was against magic that they showed such indignation. By retaining these books, the disciples would have exposed themselves to temptation. By selling them, they would have placed temptation in the way of others. They had renounced the kingdom of darkness, and to destroy its power, they did not hesitate at any sacrifice. Thus, truth triumphed over men's prejudices and their love of money. The influence of what had taken place was more widespread than even Paul realized. From Ephesus, the news was widely circulated and a strong impetus was given to the cause of Christ. Long after the apostle himself had finished his course, these scenes lived in the memory of men and were the means of winning converts to the gospel. It is fondly supposed that hidden superstitions have disappeared before the civilization of the 20th century. But the word of God and the stern testimony of facts declare that sorcery is practiced in this age as verily as in the days of the old-time magicians. The ancient system of magic is in reality the same as what is now known as modern spiritualism. Satan is finding access to thousands of minds by presenting himself under the guise of departed friends. The magicians of hidden times have their counterpart in the spiritualistic mediums, the clairvoyants, and the fortune tellers of today. Could the veil be lifted from before our eyes, we should see evil angels employing all their arts to deceive and to destroy. Wherever an influence is exerted to cause men to forget, there Satan is exercising his bewitching power. The Apostle's admonition to the efficient church should be heeded by the people of God today. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is Profitable Bonfire. When Paul came to Ephesus, there he began to preach as he always does. As we read in the book of Acts 19 from verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that 
While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after him, after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the teens concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them, and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Amen. So Paul was here in Ephesus for two years. He started off with these 12 men going into the synagogue and preaching. And there's something really important for us to take note of here in this synagogue of a man called Tyrannus. When there were some who were hardened, they had heard what Paul was preaching, but they were speaking evil of it. They refused to accept it. Paul left them alone. It's an important lesson because we go to church today we want to correct a lot of things when we see what is going on you have preached there will be some there like these 12 who believe what did the bible say that those ones who believed he took with him he said so that all he says there in verse 9 and separated the disciples he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one tyrannus so he when it was clear that these people are not listening, he focused on those who were listening. Now, something about this land called Ephesus was that they were involved in things that were demonic. Of course, they would call it magic. People had powers and they were using these powers for some kind of spiritual or supernatural manifestation. And Paul stayed in this place for two years, disputing daily, preaching the word of the Lord, and he had disciples. Now, reading from Acts 19, verse 11, you see the kind of people that were here in Ephesus. It says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought on to the sick handkerchiefs of aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So you can tell that Ephesus was a place where there were lots of demon-possessed people and these demons were bringing sickness upon people and apart from that, perhaps other things were happening here. Now, God wrought miracles through Paul. When Paul began his ministry, he wasn't intending to do these miracles. You can see that even him, it's like he didn't even know. It says that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them. Now, some people in this yeah, Ephesus saw it and thought that they wanted such a power too. Verse 13, it says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, the and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Now, take note of what happened here. These people went in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached to cast out this demon. But the demon overcame them. Now one would say, this is like what happens today with people taking the name of Jesus to go and claim to cast out demons. And you say, oh, this is a blot to the Christian cause. But it wasn't. Look at what happened here when these men were overcome by this madman. 
or this person who was possessed with evil spirits. They went out naked and wounded. In verse 17 says, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So how was Jesus' name magnified? By that miracle not being performed. By the failure of that miracle that these seven sons of Sceva wanted to do. That's how Jesus' name was magnified. Not by people thinking now that if I just go and mention the name of Jesus to cast out demons and then they go away and say, oh, Jesus' name has been magnified. No, but rather because these men were not children of God, Jesus' name was magnified in that the devils did not come out, but rather overcame the seven sons of Sceva. It says the result now is in verse 18, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Amen. This was a very important event here that people who were involved in the occult and in communication with demons, what they call magic at the time, brought the instruments of their worship and burnt them. And the price of it was heavy. I mean, Jesus was sold by Judas for 30 pieces of silver, which to him was a very huge amount of money. But here it is that this is no 30 pieces, 50,000 pieces of silver. That is a lot of money. I don't know what its equivalent will be today, but I know it is very huge. This is this silver is money. You know when they are valuing their money in those days, they use pennies, they use talents. I mean, using silver, silver is not was not a small amount in those days. When you say silver, even if it was just one piece, thirty pieces was a big amount for Judas to sell Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. But well, here it is that these people, to show that they were truly converted, they were not holding on to uh, counting their losses and saying, oh, this is going to cost me so much in following Jesus. When they believed, they showed it by their hatred for the sin which they once committed. The occultic things they used to do, they did not sell these things to other people, but rather they burned everything and that tells us something to do today. Sometimes when we are having a reformation in our lives, some people will feel like, oh, this um, dress that you know is not good. Let me give it to someone else to wear. You are putting them in temptation. They couldn't do that. And neither did they sell the articles of their evil. They burnt it. Some of us need to learn to burn. Well, you know, when you, when you have that change and you want to give up those things which you know are evil in your life and the articles uh, that you know are not good, don't give them to people. You can have a profitable bonfire with them. Don't say, oh, the loss is great because of the money I used to buy this or buy that. If the thing itself is evil, and I don't know what it may be, but if you know that it's something that is evil and only evil, then like these efficients we should learn the lesson to have a truly converted heart because if our heart is truly converted covetousness will not be there we will not only give up the things that we have been doing in the past but we will also have a transformed heart that is not covetous that is not wanting to um, make money out of the things that we know are not good but we will destroy them because we love people and we do not want to place them in danger so we won't give them those clothes that we know will place them in danger we will not share those dvds and say oh, i'm no longer watching this and then say oh give it to somebody else because me i don't use it you break it you destroy it you throw it away no matter how much you bought it you are feeling like oh i bought this thing for such an expensive amount instead of me destroying it let me give it to someone else no destroy them it's of no use and some food are Articles too. There's no point giving those food articles that you know is harming you to those who even have already. Who, who and, and those things will destroy them. For example, alcohol. If you know you're not, you've changed. There's no need giving the alcohol to another person. Destroy, throw it away. No matter how expensive it was, you may have bought it for so much, but yet destroy it. It is of no use. It's no good. Destroy it. Don't give it to anyone, and you'll have a profitable bonfire. But in the case of the efficiency, it was about the occult. Today, there are many ways in which 
people are involved in this and the very fact that there were people who were changing from the occult shows us something about the ministry of the Christians and of Paul in those days. They were not just going around telling people, believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus. That was not what they were doing. They were preaching practical things. We have seen how it was that these people here changed their life. It was not just a mere believe in Jesus thing. They had to have a change of character also. And that is the reason why they burnt these books and all the articles of magic that they had because the ministry of Paul to them made them understand that there must be a reformation in their life. If we are ministers of God today, we will not just go around telling people the Lord loves you, the Lord loves you, Jesus died for you, just believe in him, only believe. No, we won't do that but rather we will preach the practical truths of the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus and require from the people that they cut off from the things of this world and stop their sins and receive power from God to live a righteous life. But specifically, looking at what the Ephesians did with respect to burning their spiritualistic articles, we learned the lesson that we should look into our own lives today whether we do not have these same things. As we read in the devotion, Conflict and Courage, page 343, paragraph 4, the magicians of hidden times find their counterpart in spiritualistic mediums, the clairvoyants and the fortune tellers. Could the veil be lifted from our eyes, we should see evil angels employing all their arts to deceive and to destroy. Wherever an influence is exerted to cause men to forget God, there Satan is exercising his bewitching power. End of quote. So, what do we see today is a form of spiritualism. It is defined here as an influence that is exerted to cause men to forget God. Who is doing it? Satan. Satan is the one who is doing it. The ministry of Paul, like I said, was very effective. It was practical. It led the people to a radical reformation of their lives. If not, they would not have made the changes and burnt the books. And where do we see this spiritualism among us today? In almost every single cartoon given to children today are contained satanic arts and messages. From Mickey Mouse to Spongebob, Tom and Jerry and the animes all contain spiritualistic messages and satanic messages which are exerted to cause men to forget God. And even a lot of the movies that people watch today, they are, they are influenced, exerted to cause men to forget God. It is spiritualism. Just so you know, spiritualism simply means communication with demons, receiving their messages through a medium. A medium today is through the media itself, the movies, the cartoons, the games. The, these things are used by Satan to communicate to us, exerting an influence to cause us to forget God. We read from Testimonies, Volume 1, page 296, paragraph 1. It serves his purpose, as Satan's purpose well, if we neglect the exercise of prayer. For then his lying wonders are more readily received. That which he failed to accomplish in tempting Christ, he accomplishes by setting his deceitful temptations before men. He sometimes comes in the form of a lovely young person or of a beautiful shadow. He works cures and is worshipped by deceived mortals as a benefactor of our race. Phrenology and mesmerism are very much exalted. They are good in their place, but they are seized upon by Satan as his most powerful agents to destroy and deceive souls. His arts and devices are received as from heaven, and faith in the detector, the Bible, is destroyed in the minds of thousands. Satan here receives the worship which suits his satanic majesty. Now hear the next words, it says, thousands are conversing with and receiving instructions from this demon god and acting according to his teachings. The world which is supposed to be benefited so much by phrenology and animal magnetism never was so corrupt. Satan uses these very things to destroy virtue and lay the foundation of spiritualism." End of quote. So what are the things that he uses? Mesmerism, phrenology. I saw an article in 2020 in RT that says phrenology is back again. And what was what is the phrenology you are referring to? 
the face recognition technology. Now, you can go and make your research on that. But to them, it is the same principle, phrenology of those days and phrenology of today. Like we read, it is good in its place, but it is seized upon by Satan, phrenology and mesmerism. Mesmerism is hypnotism. Hypnotism is what we see when we sit down in front of a TV and there's a change of light and change of scenes and flashing in the eyes and it confuses the mind and it makes the mind susceptible to receive instructions. So with all this change of... Um, uh, what you call it now, lighting and scenes like that and then the messages are preached through the music or just through the words and suggestions made in the cartoons and the movies, something is happening. Satan is there sending his messages and like we said, thousands are receiving messages from this demon god conversing and receiving instructions from them unknown to them. Paul often warned his converts about the importance of focusing on the word of God instead of dabbling with the occult and demonic things. Colossians 2 verse 6 to 8 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the trans tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. To explain this, reading from Testimonies Volume 1, page 297, paragraph 1, it says, I was directed to this scripture as especially applying to modern spiritualism. Colossians 2 verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Thousands I was shown have been spoiled through the philosophy of phrenology and animal magnetism and have been driven into infidelity. If the mind commences to run in this channel, it is almost sure to lose its balance and to be controlled by a demon. Vain deceit fills the minds of poor mortals. They think there is such power in themselves to accomplish great works that they realize no necessity of a higher power. Their principles and faith are, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Jesus has not taught them this philosophy. Nothing of the kind can be found in his teachings. He did not direct the minds of poor mortals to themselves, to a power which they possessed. He was ever directing the minds to God, the creator of the universe, as the source of their strength and wisdom. Special warning is given in verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels intruding into those things which you, which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. End of quote. So what is the Bible telling us to, free, to be free from? To be free from the traditions of men. What are some of these traditions of men being referred to here? He said, beware. That's what Paul said to the Colossians, also to the Ephesians. Beware. Don't let anyone spoil you through the traditions of men and the philosophy and vain deceit and after the rudiments of the world. Part of the rudiments of the world is these things we call obeya. Then we have the ways witchcraft is practiced today. Still, it is still practiced. Some call it juju. In see all of these things the efficients were involved in it but they gave it up there are those today in the church who still are following the traditions of men while claiming to be children of god sometimes they pass through certain experiences and they allow men to spoil them through the traditions of men when they get sick people tell them oh this thing came from the village this thing came from this place and they allow people to convince them and tell them you need to do this and the thing they are giving to them is not found in the word of god but it is the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world they take them to a certain place where there is a man who claims to have power like this efficients we are doing in the past like the sons of Skiva and they tell them oh you need to do this and that buy this and buy that so that you can be healed of your diseases so that you can uh, the, the demon that is possessing this person can live and they are spoiled through the tradition of men others because of poverty they feel oh that somebody comes to tell them they allow men to spoil them these men come like pastors and they tell them oh, it is your grandmother or your grandfather your father your mother that's causing you not to succeed in life and then they will tell them we need to pray for you you are allowing men to spoil you through the traditions of men these people who are coming to say these things to you are just like the sons of skiva 
coming to tell you that they want to declare in your life and cast out the demon of not getting married, the demon of poverty, the demon of this and that. There's no, there's no difference between these people and the seven sons of Sceva. They say they are coming in the name of the Lord to do these things. And you who are allowing them into your life, you are fulfilling this. Paul says, the Bible says, Colossians 2 verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Where do we find it in the word of God that somebody would say, oh, if you were flying in your dream, it means this. If you were eating in your dream, it means that. If you were doing that in your dream, it means that, oh, you have spiritual husband and all of that. These are the traditions of men and the rudiments of the world. Beware lest any man spoil you through these things is what the admonition in the word of God is to us some have so involved themselves with these things that truly they are now possessed with demons i have seen people who go to these prayer houses and they tell them do this do that and before they know it they are involved in satanic things that they find it difficult to come out of i I once i met one who they, they say they see someone always following them who tell them is their spiritual husband I, these are people i know they are not people who i don't know i see others they'll say oh i'm seeing a hand in the air the hand is just there and it's a little boy and they keep seeing these things. It's not a lie. How did they get it? They went to these prayer houses and they were spoiled by the traditions of men. And after the rudiments of this world, through philosophy and vain deceit, into the worshipping of angels. That's what they went into, unknown to themselves. They have been beguiled, like we read in verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind lord is warning us to beware of these things and even more there are other ones like i've mentioned people sitting down watching these movies i remember watching mickey mouse when i was younger and the sorcery that was being practiced i remember it there was this magic that was being done and then you see what does disney call itself it calls itself magic kingdom that's what disney calls itself magic kingdom But what did the Ephesians do? They burned their magic books. But what is going on in Disney? They are educating children and everyone who is watching on magic. There's that one about Bruno. Magic, that's what it's about. Most of what they are doing, fairy tales, magic. And when your children are sitting down watching these things, it is not only Disney, all of these cartoons, they are not teaching you or your children about Christ. Your children are being spoilt. You are allowing these men to spoil the children after the traditions of men. But the word of God says, beware. Let and do not let any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world. But it is happening. Children have been spoiled. Adults have been spoiled in various ways. But the Lord Jesus teaches us that it is possible to, to be free from the occult and from satanic worship services and practices. There are all the others who their own case is not that they went into it unknowingly. Some are intentionally in these things. And perhaps you are listening to me. Perhaps you've gone to one of these clairvoyants and juju people and high priests, satanic high priests, and you've received so so called powers from them, which is not actually power. And you are looking for how to come out of it. The Bible tells us that the Ephesians were able to come out, and you also can. You know, Paul writing to the Ephesians was always alluding to these things because he knew that they were heavily involved in these things and the temptation was all around them. I mean, look at these people who burned their books and it seems there were demons everywhere because the handkerchiefs and aprons that they were taking from Paul, it was casting out demons and healing people of their disease and the demons were cast out. There was a lot of these things going on in Ephesus and then it may be so in your life too and the word of God encourages you that you can be free like the people of Ephesus. Ephesians 2 reading from verse 1 to 6 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. 
but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us. Even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So this is an encouragement to you. These people were filled with all kinds of evil. Like Paul says, they were walking according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of disobedience in diverse lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Children of wrath, but they were converted. You can be converted. You can change. Paul thought it necessary to keep reminding them of these things. In Ephesians 4, reading from verse 7, he said to them, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard or heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth, as the truth is in Jesus, that he put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, he says, put putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Instead of going and then instead of going to divination, you know, people can get angry and the anger can lead them to go after the traditions of men to afflict their fellow uh, brother. And he says, Be angry and sin not. Instead of using divination in anger towards your brother, we are to avoid every sin. He says then in Ephesians 4 verse 27, Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil, he tells them. And this is what we should do in order to overcome. And we are not to join the evil practices that are done by others. In Ephesians 5, reading from verse 6, he said to them, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. I know a friend of mine who was the head of a particular cult. And when he started to tell me of the things that are done in secret, not even one, I've, I've seen at least two people who were in the occult, and they came out of it. Like the Ephesians, that was what was involved. they were involved in. You see, if you are listening to me and you are involved in this thing in one way or another, whether it is through the secret societies for the young people, for the youths, or whether it is not just secret societies but the traditional um, practices of INSI and all these devilish things, any one of it, you can come out of it. When this young man was telling me the things that were done in secret, I said, truly, it is a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. That is why it needs to be reproved. And what are the things here? You know, it is not just going out to say you have powers. To initiate people, they usually have these sexual orgies. And then, they, not apart from the sexual orgies, there's a lot of drinking. There's a lot of alcoholism. And then there's a lot of other things. Some of them even have to go and sleep with dead bodies. That's how bad it is. Then they go into this kidnapping and using body parts to do all kinds of evil and that's why paul said it is a shame to talk of the things that these people do in darkness it was happening in his days and it is still happening in our own days today and we are told have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness 
are you listening and you have been part of these things perhaps as a kidnapper as an armed robber i remember when this man was breaking down everything about kidnappers armed robbers thieves and telling me stories of how they do this and that i was surprised and really there's a lot of evil they do but the lord says come out from among them and be a separate he does not condemn have you been there he is willing to forgive jesus has died on the cross for our sins and all you need to do is accept him as your substitute the punishment that you are supposed to receive jesus has taken it upon himself now all he requires is to accept for you to accept him into your life that he may transform you so that you will no longer be those people of darkness that's what we are told we're sometimes darkness but we need to be light and walk as children of light then we are told in verse 15 of ephesians 5 see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise why is that so redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your hearts to the lord giving thanks always for all things unto god and unto the and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of god can you understand why paul is writing this to the people of ephesus i can understand because these people must have had temptations surrounding them to go back to the works of darkness that they once left and he's giving them the tips on how to overcome stop listening to worldly songs he says speak to yourselves rather in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart instead of being drunk with wine be filled with the holy spirit how can you be filled with the holy spirit john 6 verse 63 jesus said the words i speak they are spirit and they are life to be filled with the spirit is to be filled with the word of god let the word of god dwell richly in you when you want to sing sing spiritual songs and hymns and praises to god and psalms that is the way to overcome that's we need to you see people who come out of these things need to be sensitively guarded and then he says to them in ephesians 6 reading from verse 10 which is what we need to do once upon a time you were using the tools of the devil those red things they hold in their hand as to protect yourself i don't know the name of those things but i know that heard of people who carry carry these things as protection but then paul gives them the real protection in ephesians 6 reading from verse 10 he says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places if anybody could understand this very well the people of ephesus could they were the ones who had demons they were the ones who were possessed they were the ones who were involved in magic and occult and all of that so the language paul is using here you don't see him use it in other letters he wrote to the romans and hebrews and people of corinth and philippi he didn't write like this to them why because he wrote to different locations based on what was going on in their environment in ephesus there was a lot of black magic going on there was a lot of people who thought they got protection and armor from the demons and going to those traditions and thinking that they are protected and these people in ephesus would have constant temptation to do this but paul was telling them no put on the whole armor of god we are not wrestling against flesh and blood it is a spiritual thing truly for the people of ephesus there were spiritual manifestations in their environment there was a madman possessed with demons it was not a lie and this person single-handedly put dispossessed and overcame seven men this was demonic stuff here it is true that demonic things do exist they do exist yes but how do we overcome we are told here with the whole armor of god verse 13 of ephesians 6 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith 
wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins, and for me that utterance may be given me, unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Thus it was that Paul equipped the people of Ephesus with the armor of God, at least telling them what they needed to do. And it is speaking to us today because we also are surrounded like the people of Ephesus with demonic things, spiritual wickedness in high places. And we must understand that in the place where the devil manifests himself through his own powers, possessing people and doing wonders in our sight, we must put on the armor of God. We must not allow ourselves to be spoilt through vain philosophy, vain things and philosophies of men and traditions of men. Many have joined the church but they have not left the traditions of men. Time after time they are still going back to these things. The Lord is speaking to you. Instead of going back, what has it profited you as you have been going back? Rather put on the armor of God. Let truth be your shield and your faith be your shield and the armor of God, all of it, whether the helmet of salvation. Prayer is a very important one. Faith in the word of God, practicing what the word of God says and believing that the Lord will fulfill his own end of the bargain. And we must take the truth always with us and righteousness. These are the things that shield us in this spiritual warfare with demons and with Satan. You cannot overcome him by shouting and like people do, they want to kill the devil and they are praying in such a way that they think that it's by the loudness of their voices that they will overcome. No, if you are not living in righteousness, it's righteousness preserves a nation. You must live in righteousness and cut yourself away. You see these people go to church, they go and pray, 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 then come back home and they sit down and watch the demons speak to them again in these movies and cartoons and music and then they are back in church again they're praying and then go back home being possessed again thinking that they are fighting satan not knowing that this spiritual warfare is not about opening your mouth to shout in prayer but there is intelligence in it you must cut off from the source of satan where he's coming into your life and if you are listening to all this worldly music and watching reading books books that do not profit and engaging in occultic things and believing lies because some of the lies like i told earlier where they say oh if you eat in your dream this is what it means if you sleep if you fly in your dream this is what it means these are lies of the devil that he uses to come into your life like i said earlier there are people who they tell them these lies this is happening in your life this is happening in your life and then they tell them come to our prayer house we will deliver you they did not even need any deliverance they were okay but because they believed the lie that they were possessed then they now become possessed when they go to those people. Numerous people it has happened to. Their life is fine, they are okay. Somebody comes to tell them, oh, you are possessed with demons. There's somebody doing this to you in your life. Then they now go to those people's prayer houses and there they now become possessed actually. But before that, they were not. Do not let any man spoil you through these nonsense philosophies saying that if you eat in your dream, it means this. If you fly in your dream, it means that. If you had this incident in your dream, it means this and that. And then through that means they they now send the evil spirits upon you. Don't let anyone spoil you. Even if anything like that you think is happening, what is your solution? Prayer, the truth, righteousness. Cut yourself away from everything that the devil is using to come into your life. And you find out that many of these people will not tell you not to watch the movies or read those evil books or stop listening to all the music or dress properly or follow the word of God and live in righteousness. They won't tell you that. They will just keep telling you, oh, we need to pray, pray, pray. It's demons. We need to pray and cast it out and use chains and all kinds of means to cast out these demons. They did not learn that from Christ. They are still practicing the, so, the same traditions of men, rudiments of the world. That's still what they are doing, but under a Christian garb. And the Lord is telling us, come out from among them. Take the armor of God. And it is not those things. Righteousness following the word of God, living in harmony with it, being filled with the spirit and that is being filled with the word of God. And then your prayers to faith in the word of God, truth. These are the things and your feet short about the gospel of peace. I pray that the Lord will give us grace that as we practice the simplicity of the word of God, as we have, that have been given to us as the armor of God, that we shall be free from the powers of the enemy. Let us pray. 
Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the message you've given to us today. Is there anyone who needs to be free? I pray, Father, free from the devil and his power. I pray, as you did for the people of Ephesus through Paul, please may this message be one that will free your children from the power of Satan. As the people of Ephesus were able to be free from these demons, I know it is possible for your children to be free. Some people think that they have already sold their soul to the devil, but there is no such thing. And I pray, Lord, that you convince such a soul to know that it is possible that the devil does not have as much power as our Lord Jesus and that you can deliver them as you delivered the people of Ephesus. Please, Lord, deliver us from the power of Satan and save us that we may be overcomers. Teach us to put on the armor of God and to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. In Jesus' name of God. Amen. Shield up this faith. 